Welcome back in, everybody. Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy. The hits just keep coming for Mr. Dave Shamandle. <laughs> God, I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm having flashbacks to junior high and high school, man. I'll tell you that. It's awesome. Oh, very cool. If you guys are just joining us, uh, Dave Shamandle in the studio with us from SlickSticks.com. It's always a pleasure having Dave in here. Wealth of knowledge, and I know everybody out there loves loves David. They love your stories, man. Oh, we always get emails and texts and stuff about that. It's very cool. Yeah, they say, can't and, you uh, shut him up? No. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, my mom and my in-laws love you. Well, I love them. Yeah. They're like, that oh, by Dave the way, Mandel is a great storyteller. <laughs> by the way, hello, yeah. mother. There you go. I hope Gotta say hi to mom. Happy. Yeah. Gotta say hi to mom. But uh, we were talking the first hour, we talked a little bit about uh, warm-ups. So going from warm-up to the course to play, whether you're playing a match play, a tournament play, individual stroke play, whether you're just going to play with buddies. Uh, we gave a few, few drills on um, things that you can do, you know, hit some pitch shots, try to get your feel in your hands, maybe focus a little bit more on shorter shots. Dave talked about hitting like a seven iron and hitting it like a pitch shot, let the ball roll out, and then once it rolls out, you know, find find the next Just spot little, where the ball bigger rolled out. A little bigger there. swing, you bet. And that okay. that really is a nice way to warm up. I, God, I've been doing yeah, that for years. That's, that's really good for the people that are time starved too. You know, they <laughs> don't have time to hit a bucket of balls, but they have time to hit maybe a dozen. Yeah. So it, it does. No, work. it's it does. It actually can make sense. All right, we're gonna go to the phones. We got Bill on the phone. Bill, welcome to Golf Talk Radio. Hey, Bill, welcome to Golf Talk Radio. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you, sir? Good, good. I thought I'd put in my two cents worth as far as warm-up. Yeah, throw it up, throw it out there. We'd love to hear it. I always think that it's very important that you're relaxed and that you uh, have plenty of nutrients so you have the energy to play golf. So I suggest the BBBM method. That's simply a, uh, a breakfast burrito and a Bloody Mary. <laughs> there you go. That always like a good it. way to start a golf round. Ah, that's awesome, man. I love it. I don't like Bloody Marys, but that doesn't mean I don't love your warm up. Well, and beer. <laughs> well, hey, it yeah. works. It's okay. another beat. Hey, that makes that makes sense. I I think that's awesome. You know, I mean, that also means you're going to go enjoy the round, right, Bill? That's right. You're yeah. going to start off in a good mood. I mean, you can you can watch you can watch golfers at a golf course, and you can kind of see who's who's going in a little uptight. And who's who's kind of letting it loose? I think if you're getting a breakfast burrito and a Bloody Mary, you know that guy's going to have fun. You bet you. I always oh, like Johnny, Johnny Miller's approach. He always said, "You go on the putting green, you make two short putts for confidence, get two long putts to judge the speed, and then get the hell off of there." <laughs> I love it. It's not bad. You, you don't you don't want to be putting doubts in your head about your putting. So just uh, don't spend any time on the putting green. So what do you what do you what's your thoughts on uh, for a lot of people that you know you know Bill I know you see a lot of people that put in a lot of practice and they might be great on the on the practice range and they get on the course and they're really frustrated with you know what's the results are not happening the way they want. Um, well, I think I think Dave said it best. I mean, everybody's short game is so important. I I don't know how many people complain about they can't get up and down, and they spend all their time hitting their drivers and putting, and they don't go to the chipping and pitching area and work out of the sand trap and work on that part of their game. That is so critical because if you can make up for mistakes in the fairway and on the, on your long fairway shots, if you can get up and down from off the green. So I think that's so important and that's probably the least amount of practice anybody spends. Yeah. I was, I was told growing up that uh, you should work on your game from, from the green going back. Right. You know, that, that that's a great way to practice. So you do your putting, you do your chipping, your pitching, your bunker play, your longer pitch shots, then your approach shots, then your tee shots. You know, that was one of yep. the ways that I was taught growing up. And I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. But uh, well, we appreciate you calling, Bill. It's awesome. I hope things are good down at Black Lake. Everything's good, and it's great listening to you two guys. Awesome. Well, thank. we appreciate you calling in, Mr. Bill, and uh, hopefully Mr. Billy Gibbs will be back next week, I believe. He's a busy man. Oh, good. Take care All of yourself, right. Mr. Bill. Good hearing you. You, you. Guys. you guys, too. Take care. Thanks, Bye-bye. man. Okay, Bill. See you. Bye. I like him. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good, good guy. I've been in the business a long time. You guys want to call the show with your warm-ups, 805-595-3776, or anything else for that matter. We'll, we can throw a Caddyshack trivia your way. Uh, make the call you rules question. You call 805-595-3776. So one of the topics I had, I had a, a few of them here um, 
for Dave, and <laughs> he's going to laugh. But um, when do you draw the line, Dave? You know, you're a club guy. When when do you draw the line on reshafting clubs, older clubs? What's the what's the point of like you go hey, like I, and I realize you're in the business. You know, I mean, we had this conversation we yesterday. About it yesterday, you bet. And, and I have to say, man, your honesty was awesome. And I, I, you know, I use Dave all the time for all the the reshafts and adjusting loft and lies and all those things because he's got such a wealth of knowledge because he's been in the industry a long time. You're just a really smart guy. I mean, you really know what you're doing. God, can and, I tape that and take yeah, it around? It's, it's going to be on podcast. <laughs> I'll, Nobody I'll, ever I'll, said that. I'll create a, I'll, I'll cut it out and create a loop for you. You can make it a ringtone. I like it. How about that? There yeah, I like it too. <laughs> so, um, so Dave and I were going back and forth, and there was a gentleman up there. I won't say his name. Up at Pass Rules Golf Club, he was having a hard time. You could tell he was torn. He's got this old set of copper brilliant ping i twos. Beautiful golf club. You know, right? most shops don't even work on those. Really? Uh huh. I, I could, I could see that. It's poisonous. Yeah, I remember you said yeah. that. Well, so you're putting your life on the line for this guy then. Yeah, I gave him a deal. I had to charge more. Man. Actually, what a great way to go. Do you have a, ha- a hazardous handling fee, by chance, that you can add <sighs> on to that? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But my, I guess my point is, you know, these are Ping I-2s. I would, I'd would, i be guessing, but I think they're from the early 90s. Is that right? Mm, late 80s, early 90s, somewhere yeah. right around there. Yeah. So my question to you, and we were having this question on the phone, or a conversation on the phone, is like, what's... Is it worth it to reshaft those clubs? Ping I twos are, are kind of a different breed. Uh, it's the second most sold golf club ever, and uh, they were so far ahead of their time it was unbelievable. And there's still people out there looking for them, and I know of a few that are still being played on tour. The Ping I twos? Uh huh. Really? Because they have the the groove thing my yeah. father did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're made out of stainless steel. They're hard as a rock, and those grooves just don't wear out. Yeah. Well, they do after a million shots or whatever, but uh, there's still a few of them out there. Like I said, that, that club was so far ahead of its time that uh, there's a few aficionados out there that are still looking for them. That's so interesting. And, um, huh. I never thought of it that and way. And they still get a pretty penny for them. Oh, I I can totally I imagine I can totally yeah. imagine that. So there was only one club ever that uh, there there was more of them sold. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean that that totally makes sense. Um, we're gonna deviate for a little bit. We're gonna go to the phones. I think we've got Bill on the line. Today's the call calling about bills. Bill, we got Bill on the line. Bill, you bills there? Bills all the time. Yes, I am. Welcome back, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, and you? Good. You sound great. Thank you, man. It's uh, That's what happens when you go on vacation for five days or whatever. You come back to your real job, and it's like, oh, my God, why did I go on vacation? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I do I do feel energized, which is good. You look good. And Thank so you. It's always good to take a little bit of a break and get back to it. Then yeah. To it. It's nothing like hanging out with family. Family's awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah, we took a couple of days off, too. Where'd you guys go? Uh, we went down to see the Dodgers. We could not break the jinx on them, though. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I know where, where you're really just been. Oh, man, you don't know how close you almost <laughs> got. Of course, you're, 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 you're watching the Padres, aren't you? No, I'm not watching. To be honest with you, I haven't watched any. I'll take it. I haven't watched any baseball till last night. I watched the Giants beat the White Sox he nine to two. Team with the oh, well, Halloween good. colors. Yeah. They actually won a game. I, here's here's where the Giants are at. I'm rooting for them to win 60, 63 games so they don't lose a hundred. Yeah, <laughs> they got a chance. Well, anyway, you you were talking about uh, warming up. I don't do too much. I I mainly do stretching. Yeah. And and then uh, then I'll grab three clubs, you know, my, my driver and my fairway woods and just swing them and, and you know, just to get used to the extra so that and and then go down to my fairway to for my drive and then, and then I'll do a little putting, you know, a little putting and chipping just to get loosened up all the way around, but nothing real too heavy. Of course I'm older, so So is that I wanna wear myself out. Of course. Is that is that religiously what you do every time before you go yeah, on the course yeah. or do you ever every, cut corners? Yeah. And then, and and then I make sure I usually have a cup of have my coffee mug with me, you know, staying with the go with the senior. Yeah. So what do you, what do you have in the coffee cup? Just coffee. Are you sure? 
Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, that's what I tell everybody, <laughs> too, Bill. You know, I, I, I did hear your fellow with the, the Bloody Mary, so maybe a little Irish coffee at once in a while, but yeah. that's, that's yeah. getting too uh, – I gotta wait until later in the day for that. Yeah, you know it's it's funny. I I mean I've done that before, not the Bloody Mary thing, but I've done the you know having a beer and whatnot. I I, I think I don't know. I guess maybe I just care too much. I probably need to have a drink now that I think about yeah. it. But when <laughs> I go and play, it goes out the window. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's a half a beer. It's just like man, my I just like whatever. And then and then when I get done with the round, I'm like, damn it. Why did I do that? What a waste. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and then you see and, the guy and, that... And, I, and I get more enjoyment <laughs> around with the guys and having a beer afterward. Uh, then you yeah. see the guy that's pounding them all day and he plays great on I the know. back nine. And you say, God, he can't even stand up. But, but then, then then comes the question, if that's if that's what you do, then are you stuck in that position to go back out and enjoy the game again? I don't yeah. know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... Uh-huh. I don't. It's one thing. Like when I about five years ago, I got together with some of my high school buddies for our 30, 30 year high school reunion, where we just did our own thing. Went played golf. We went up to Truckee, played Coyote Moon. It was awesome. Oh, fun. It was great. And uh, you know, I we played three different rounds. One round had a beer. It was it was fun. It was cool. It was cool. But three days in a row of like drinking and playing golf, it's like it's too much for me. I'd rather yeah. I'd rather like I still want to I want to play well. Like I don't need to be perfect. But I want to play well, you that's know? it. And I want to hit good shots. And I want to. And part of the enjoyment for me for the game is is actually thinking about the shots and strategizing. And and as soon as you start drinking, that's like I was talking about in the morning. The you morning want, you want to hit the shots, not drink shots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, I think for me, and I, I'm just talking about myself. But I mean, it's just there's moderation. You know, like I could have one round where we drink a couple beers, and and I honestly, the only time that I ever got to a point where it was really really bad was we and i don't know why i did this but uh one of the one of the um uh it was one of my birthdays and we did uh out at out at avila and i had about 20 guys and every time someone made a oh. shot they had an air horn not made a shot i made a birdie they had an air horn and so then i had oh, to do geez. a shot you had to do oh yeah I, I i learned real quick when i made the turn to the back nine i'm like i'm just gonna put my lips to the bottle and pretend i'm taking a shot <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, by the time we got to the back nine, it was I wasn't worthless, but my there was no golf swing. I had nothing. I was I was uh-huh. absolutely uh-huh. just ruined. Well, I remember one round I played with uh, one of the hosts of this show. I won't say which one it was, but it wasn't <laughs> you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a deal going in a scramble that we were going to do a shot every time our team made birdie. Oh no! We shot twenty-one under. Oh no! <laughs> And you know, we quit doing it quickly, but uh, well, yeah, we that's... had we had three eagles, one wow. par, and the rest birdies. And oh, that was dangerous. That's that's bad. <laughs> At Santa Maria Country Club, I, that was a fun day. I mean, it's fun, and then it gets kind of like it gets bad. Yeah, it was okay. I'll talk to you guys again sometime. Yeah, hey Bill, uh, go to golftalkradio.com, fill out that trivia form on the all right on sure the page. Will. We'll send you some stuff. All right, my man. Okay, Thank good you. talking to you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. But, uh, yeah, so there's <laughs> – you guys got some warm-ups, uh, ideas for golf, things that you do. Call us at 805-595-3776. You've got other, other things you want to talk about, throw them out. We'll throw you a prize just like we did with Bill there and, and, uh, and the other Bill. And um, So we're talking about – I know we kind of veered off. We were talking about, you know, reshafting clubs. I mean, I pose the question – I guess it's probably more of a personal question is – what what's the point where you got a set of clubs and you're thinking ah, I'm going to reshaft these guys that had these clubs for 15 years? You better really like them, because because they ain't cheap. What, well, and when you and I talked yesterday, I mean, you gave me some really good pricing, yeah. right? I mean, no, I, for the whole of, set, I gave a break on it. And yeah, it's, and then it's still not cheap. There's a there's a range, you know, mm-hmm. and and this particular individual, I mean, obviously like anything else, this particular individual wanted twelve clubs reshafted. It wasn't like your standard seven eight iron set, mm-hmm. and it was a shaft that was pr- proprietary to Ping. Yep. So I mean, all those things have a cost to them, but you know, you brought up a point earlier before Bill called that um, I never even thought the guys would be using Ping I twos because they still got the square grooves and they were grandfathered in and they yep. were. I mean that makes all the sense in the world. So then, yeah, maybe that is a shaft, a set of clubs that's worth 
reshafting. It's possible. You play them really well and you love them, you don't want to change, then I get, spend a couple hundred bucks. Maybe it might even cost you, if you got a big set, it might cost you three, four hundred bucks. Yeah. That was. It was, uh, I get maybe two, three sets a year. Yeah. Whereas guys say they want it. Most of the time, I try to talk them out of it because, you know, you, you get a top line shaft, the shaft costs 30 plus dollars and, you know, they charge 20 or so dollars labor and eight ten dollars for a grip you put tax on top of that yeah. they're looking at sixty dollar bill per club yeah real quick and easy and you can get new clubs for you know it's yeah 50 percent more or something like that but uh well and if you how get much a, do you like the club i think it really comes down to yeah but and if you get you know you think of the ping i set like this guy had a, has a one through a sand wedge which is just unheard of mm -hmm. a one iron through a sand wedge um Nowadays, with the hybrids and everything else, I mean, you, he could he could have the sand wedge through probably the five iron, Maybe. get rid of the you know four three two and one, and he even admitted that yesterday after we hung up, you and I hung up talking. He's like, well, maybe I don't need to do those. I I just said to him, I'm like, well, what are you going to use the one iron for? You know, <laughs> they I'm make just, good tomato steaks. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, and I was just asking him. I mean, it's there's not many people that can. You know, if he says hey, I'm going to use the one iron for teeing off, then I get it. That's that's cool. But um, you know, I I tend to think like as you and I talked through it yesterday on the phone. There are very few sets, in my opinion, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. That are if they're 15 years old, I don't think that the technology from then even matches close to what there is now. No, like so why not spend the six hundred dollars or whatever it's going to cost you towards a new set? Mm -hmm. No, I like I said yesterday i was trying to talk the guy out of it yeah because it's just uh except you know that's a unique set of clubs that right yeah it might be i think that's it. an exception yeah. but for you when you you know when you do give me a set of top flight irons which were top of the line back in those yeah. days or mcgregor's or <clears throat> hogan's or something like that i would really strongly say don't do it yeah. because technology has come so far yeah how long does it take you to normal, like say a normal set of eight irons to reshaft? Oh, it's a one day job. So it takes you the whole day. Well, it, it's setting up time. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Um, it, 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 actual time working on them isn't that long. Yeah, you know, it doesn't take a minute to pull a shaft. It takes, uh, you know, how long does it take to mix epoxy and yeah. and set it back in? And you know, it takes a few seconds to spine a shaft and. It's just a lot of little things that kind of add up. Yeah. Yeah. If you care about it. Yeah. Because you could just throw the shaft in there and not spine it and not do these other things that. Yeah. It's just, it's just, and then you turn a ferrule down, make it perfect, and you know, it's, yeah. and polish it when you're done. And, and See, because you care. Swing weight them. And, there you, you know, go. I See? guess it does take a long time. It does. <laughs> well, that's why I brought it up because I don't think people realize, like, I've heard other people. When they said though they're going to reshaft, they're going to do this. I'm like, well, I'll just take it home and do da 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 da. I'm like, eh, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah, it's, you got to prep the heads yeah. and prep the shafts, and you got to you know it's trim the shafts. And I I do have a list of you know what reshafting set of irons uh, involved, what's involved with it in the shop. Anytime anybody ever argues the point, I say, well, that's what I do. And I point at it, and they they look up at it, and they say, really, you do all that? And I say, well, yeah. So wow, hey, it's it's a little bit time consuming, but uh, gotta do it right. Yeah, no, then that's awesome. And and you guys, if you're just tuning in, it's Dave Shimandel joining me here on Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy from SlickSticks.com. Uh, Dave Shimandel is at uh, SlickSticks at eight zero five five nine eight nine 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 three. You guys want to get clubs regripped? You want reshafts, adjusting loft and lies, flight scopes, golf lessons, you name it, down in uh, South County Monarch Dunes. He's the man. Monarch Dune's great condition right now. Awesome. Really is. Uh, speaking of shafts, too, I want to get this in for Fujikura. They have uh, two of their models, uh, the Atmos, which is taking the tour by storm, and um, it's available in three different um, uh, launch angles. And then their Pro Shaft, uh, probably the most uh, uh, used shaft that, that is comes in every weight and flex imaginable uh those two shafts are also available in what they call a fold folds of honor patriot edition 
and it's the exact same shaft as the uh, original. Just has a little different paint job. Costs the same price, but Fujikura has given up a percentage of their uh, uh, proceeds to Folds of Honor, which uh, you know you put a shaft in and honor a vet, which is really cool. Nice. Yeah. That's very so cool. I, I love it. I've sold a few of those, and it's just uh, it's a neat deal. That's really that's awesome. Very cool. And uh, speaking of the Folds of Honor, if you guys are uh, looking to go across the pond and uh, got a bucket list uh, uh, with a trip over there to play golf in Ireland, Spain, Portugal, you name it, check out Premier Irish Golf Tours. They've got a Folds of Honor Pro Am going on. You can uh, visit PremierIrishGolfTours dot com today. God, that worked out well. It did. Five star <laughs> ratings on uh, golf courses, tee time bookings, also facilities at PremierIrishGolfTours dot com. Give them a call here in the states at 508-328-7541. That's five zero eight three two eight seven five four one. We're going to take our first break of the second hour. You're listening to Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy right here on ESPN Radio. Stay with us. 